Hi guys, today I'm going to be giving you my quarterly homeschool updates. But when I'm doing this, I'm not just going to be sharing with you all the curriculum and how it's going, if it's working, what's not working, but I'm also gonna talk about how their behavior, how their character, how some challenges that have come up this nine weeks is affecting their academics and our schedule, all the things because all of it is life. I was gonna say education, but in reality, it's, it's life. It's how we do things. You can't really separate them. They're all interconnected. So first of all, we have pretty much kept all the same curriculum as we decided to use from the beginning with the exception of a few things. One of which, Homeschool Spanish Academy, which is a great program. I have nothing bad to say about them, but my kids, my boys specifically, don't do online school too well. I've learned this now. I don't know if it's because they just got too comfortable with it and realized, you know, they can get away with a lot of things when you're only seeing like this, <laughs> but it wasn't working. So we went ahead and we have decided to take a sabbatical. We've been doing it for a year. My daughter is still continuing, but as a family, we decided to invest in Talkbox Mom which is pretty much Charlotte Mason, language learning, fluency, not much grammar, not much of the other stuff. It's, it's fluent speaking stuff. Everybody learns it, but the work is already done for you. So when I open this book, I already have challenge one and two out in the open, but challenge three is in here. We did get a nice little book with some Spanish phrases that we can use in the house that are actually usable. So, for example, go downstairs and get your blanket. De abajo y traí la cobija. Co but you know what's cool is I don't know how to say this, right? But they have an app for it, which organizes everything and makes it so much easier. My kids have also expressed to me they are done learning Spanish, so we did make a deal because I always include my kids when I'm making some of their educational decisions. We made a deal that they would do Talk Box Mom for the two boxes that I have, and then we would decide if we're gonna continue with Spanish or switch to another language, which for them, they actually have been expressing a desire to learn Hebrew, which would be great, because actually I could, so we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know. I have added handwriting to the boys' curriculum, and the, well, actually everybody's curriculum is at Naomi. We are using this right now, a reason for handwriting. Really simple, just simple, straightforward. You know, nothing too, too, too crazy, but enough for them to practice. And of course, we have been going through and checking. And when I say we, I want to add as a side note, my husband has also taken so much initiative with homeschooling this year. And, and he's not just a principal, he is, he is a homeschool teacher with me that I can't even begin to say how important it is for fathers to jump on board and teach and take responsibility, especially when you have adolescence. That age bracket between nine and forever, <laughs> they need daddies more than moms. I hate saying that, but they do. And my husband has taken that initiative. He checks their work. He is uh, doing Bible studies with all of them individually every at least four times a week for an hour at a time, working on Bible memory verses, just all the things. And on top of that, he, he has been taking my daughter to her therapies. So on Mondays and Fridays, I can stay at home with the other three kids and really focus in on their homeschool, which wasn't happening before. We were car schooling a lot of the time, but now, it's really happening. <laughs> Another thing is, is that we're really working together, me and my husband, as a team, as opposed to two separate teachers, we are now a team. And we are really striving to hold my kids accountable for their actions. One of the things that there has been some challenges without going into too much detail, but we have seeked out a, um, I guess you would call them a counselor or coach. That is his official term. He is a coach and he's a believer, a Christian. And coming from that Christian perspective, 
is so important when you're training kids and counseling kids, especially when they have ADHD. So that's what we have, and there have been a lot of changes in regards to that, one of which is me having more time, scheduled time to work with my kids. We have also taken away screen time significantly, you know, based on some situations that have happened and, you know, the ADHD thing. We have limited screens to basically teaching textbooks and IEW structure and style and special privileges, you know, when that opportunity arises. So like I said, we are doing teaching textbooks. He works on both of them, actually all three of them work on the iPad and they do it in front of me in my presence, whether I'm in the kitchen cooking a meal or if I'm in here working with Naomi on some of her school stuff, I see them physically working through teaching textbooks. They also do IEW, which is approximately a 45 minute to one hour video that they watch in two parts once a week. And that's really nothing when they do it in my presence. I just make sure they're not flipping over to YouTube or flipping over to Roblox or Minecraft, and then we're good, we're good. I've also allowed them, because they're not on screens as much, they're naturally starting to explore things that they normally haven't done. One of my sons has been really interested in solving puzzles, Rubik's Cube specifically. He knows all the algorithms, he's really fast really fast and I bought him several different types of cubes that he can work with to memorize their algorithms with. He's also building a lot of things, fixing a lot of things. He's going to be my engineer probably. That is where it's just blossoming, so to speak. And my other son is outside exploring the world around him, whether he's riding his bike or he's playing basketball with the neighbors, frisbee with the neighbors, jumping on a trampoline, tromping through the woods. He's just been outside. I do have a video where I talk about middle schoolers and I talk about the middle school brain. And especially between the age of nine to 14, they're hardwiring some things, but they're also being pruned of things that they don't need while the other stuff that's hardwired is blossoming. And for some reason, this outside thing for him is blossoming. And this, my other son with his algorithms and his mathematics and his building and creating is blossoming for him. It's just, it's so cool to see and feed into that. He's also actually, both of the boys are in archery, which does take a lot of precision and focus and both of them are flourishing in that area. And ironically, we're also doing the Middle Ages together, uh, which has been awesome. <laughs> They're really into the Middle Ages and it's working out really, really well. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But one of the other things that I'm working on because of the ADHD and organization, instead of having all of their schoolwork in one of these cabinet doors, I've now given a door to each of my children, a whole shelf. So opening up this one, I mean, of course, I have, you know, school supplies at the top and down here. This is one of my son's work. He knows every single day he can go to the shelf and if he doesn't know what to do, he basically pulls this off the shelf and just starts digging through it. I mean, like I showed you, we have the handwriting. This is a book that he is reading for the homeschool co-op on Tuesdays. We have, this is Fix-It Grammar, which goes with Structure and Style IEW. Speaking of IEW, here is his IEW folder. He also has a vocabulary workbook, and so this is where he is right now. This is all of their stuff from Homeschool Spanish Academy printed up. I am gonna have them finish this, though, because I want them to use it as a really good review. So they're gonna finish this. This is his history stuff that we actually do together, but it is in here. This is his notebook that we fill out together, his to-do list that he uses every single morning. And then he has some scratch paper for algebra, pre-algebra, and then a folder for IEW referencing. So that's his little nook, so to speak. I do have this over here. This is pretty much teacher man manuals and reference materials that he may need. And so each of these cabinets are going to look like that. When I open them up, you can see here's his other, the other son. This is Ethan, and then here is all his work, and then Hannah's as well. So, so here's Hannah's. Um, she's a little bit more, she takes a little bit more ownership of herself. 
since she has put some books in here that uh, I did not put in here. These are her reading books that she's reading for fun, and she has a, has a, has a jar in here that she got from her homesteading class at the co-op. The top shelves are other materials for other things, but they get the bottom shelves. The last one is Naomi's, but it's more me organizing it. I do have a morning basket, so to speak, which is their devotionals that they have in here that they have to do every day that they discuss with mom. And of course my husband, like I mentioned before, is taking more ownership of it, an hour per kid for four days, four days a week. He's spending time with them. But this is also devotional and storage for our Bibles. My husband's working on Bible study. That's something new. He's always really done it, but now he's really doing it on an individual basis. Bible memory, uh, being able to think logically through the Bible, memorize certain topics, ideas, ask the hard questions, logically think through it. I mean, he's doing all that with them right now. The black box over here is all the stuff that we do together, and that pretty much at this point is including the Middle Ages which is so much fun to be doing together. Now when it comes to Naomi, and no, I did not clean this area, sorry. We do have our box that I have been working with her on and it is going amazingly. This is the program So Happy to Learn that we're doing with her where she has books that she reads, she has happy sheets that she completes. We're spending approximately 45 minutes a day on this box. And some days are better than others, but for the most part, we're doing it. She has her markers. Where is her button? It wasn't in the box, but here's, here's that was easy. Is her button. So her box sits right here. I do have a little bit of handwriting without tears that I have put over here that I kind of pull out every once in a while to help her with some numbers. I'm probably going to go through that curriculum again on the side just for fun to re-enter, just not, not even for fun. I mean, it is fun. It's fun, it is. But just to really stress the strokes and the direction without having to make too many photocopies. Just buy the book, buy several copies of the book and we'll just keep doing it over and over again. It helps, it works, and we're just building her muscles and building her letter recognition and word recognition and all those things. We also have a ton of books and puzzles down here. Naomi is going through a cat in a hat face. <laughs> but she does have this guy that we got for her that comes with her everywhere. That's why it's downstairs. It was downstairs. We have invested in some more Dr. Seuss books that she's going through. And I'm starting to realize how you could pretty much learn how to read with those books. <laughs> I mean, I know it's old school, but there's a reason why they were so popular and are still popular. We also, of course, have these books, which we've been going through with Naomi. They've been coming kind of everywhere with her. We have not gotten to this section yet, but we have been reading through these. Uh, of course, we're doing Bible stories with her because she's involved with the devotional section. Now, there have been some ar obstacles, like I mentioned before. I mentioned some of them. Another one of, their of, <laughs> of our obstacles is that I really honestly over, I overdid it this year. I'll be completely honest to admit that I overdid it this year with scheduling. Of course, we have Naomi's therapies. There's like nine of them. But on top of that, we have dance, we have archery, and dance for both girls at two separate times. And then we have co-op all day Tuesday and all day Thursdays which based on the fact that they were not completing some of their homeschool work that was required from me to do at co-op during their breaks, they weren't doing their work, we have made it this, the decision to drop one of our days starting next semester. It was a tough call, but I, it, it, was, it was a good decision to make. Plus the drive was exhausting and I was literally there with Naomi trying to find stuff to do with her for five hours, five hours. And she was always, she has always been ready to go after three hours. But we do have therapy on Wednesday and that's usually our day that if we need to fill in some doctor appointments, we do, we try not to, but my husband is on, as is at work on Wednesdays. And we don't have therapy till 1230, so we have all morning. So we are making it a point to have more time at home with the family to focus on the academics that we need to get done. So that kind of covers, you know, our mid nine weeks, quarterly, I should say quarterly and not mid, quarterly check-in, all is well. We've definitely made some mistakes, had some bumps. 
Go ahead and comment down below, share with me what your quarter looks like or mid midway through looks like because I know we're inching up on Christmas and I know a lot of people take that December off. In fact, what made ours a little bit bumpy is we did take quite some time off, one for vacation and a lot of time off during the high holidays. So we're hoping to catch up while you guys are taking December off. We're gonna, we're gonna catch up through December. That's kind of our goal here. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned. I'll be sharing more videos and more lives and I have a really exciting, really, really super exciting giveaway coming up and challenge. It's going to be cool. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.